Hello and welcome. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Those tremendous words of Christian hope, so often spoken in funeral services and indeed elsewhere, come at the end of Romans chapter 8, which was in fact the reading set for last Sunday, although in the end we didn't use it in our two churches. But this passage is too good and too important and too wonderful and too rich to allow to pass by so easily. So after I've begun by praying this week's collect, then I'll read Romans 8, 26 to 39, and after that share a few thoughts. Though frankly, I commend you to hold on to the original words rather than any of mine. Anyway, let's pray first. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as lambs to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, each verse of this passage is worth holding on to. I'd suggest taking one a day, reading it and rereading it, sucking the juice out of it like sucking a sweet. These are words of profound reassurance for those going through difficult times. If you're despairing, if you think your prayers aren't answered, or you can't even formulate a prayer, if you're lost or lonely, broken or sad, then these words are for you. Paul wrote them while he was in prison himself, so he knew about suffering. And then it seemed like all his travel plans had been scuppered, his mission aborted, his vocation frustrated. Nevertheless, he can say with confidence in verse 28, God works for the good of all those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Notice Paul doesn't call the circumstances good. There was nothing good about being beaten or imprisoned for your faith. But he was confident God could use it somehow, that good would come from it. And we, of course, know that amongst that good is this letter to the Romans that we can read 2,000 years later. 
Verse 30 has gained a certain notoriety because of the word predestination. Those God predestined, he called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. It's not really a doctrinal exposition. It's not aimed to exclude people very definitely. It's not saying you are not predestined, so too bad. It's to give reassurance. Because I believe certainly that God puts out his call to everyone in all the world. But it's only by hearing and responding that you get the reassurance that God is working often in ways you can only begin to imagine. If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 31. It's not a conditional if, but causal. Since God is for us, no one can be against us. And it's not God is for me and therefore against you. God is for all whom he has called according to his purposes. It may look like the world is against you, but God has shown he's for you because he sent his own son for you, showing the full extent of his love. For Christ died for us, giving us forgiveness and thereby cancelling all charges that our sinfulness makes against us. Troubles and difficulties of all sorts may very well continue, but God is on our side. And if we're inseparable from him, we cannot be overcome. We are more than conquerors. Final section is very often read at funerals. It begins with the defeat of the final enemy, death itself. And if death cannot separate us from the love of God, then nothing can. The sentence continues with a list of powers that have a baleful influence on human existence shows its full fruit in the sinfulness of individuals and of society. But the fact is, none of this can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can, because we know that love in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
speak such words into our ears, Lord, each time our resolution slips and we become depressed by our human weakness and oppressed by the powers ranged against us and bring us through to share your triumph. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.